Hey guys, Michael here. It's March 17th, 2009, and today Apple previewed the iPhone OS 3.0 software. At youtube.com slash the revived one, I did give you guys a wish list of mine, and for the most part, Apple did a lot of improvements and in making that this 3.0 software a big improvement. I'm not going to say they've done everything, but from a business perspective, it's silly to expect them to do everything, because if they did everything, what would iPhone OS 4.0 be for? So let's start with in-app purchases. This is for paid apps only, but they'll instead of just buying the application in the App Store, you'll have different purchases, or different in-app purchases as they call it, which allows you to purchase additional content inside the application. So you can purchase new content, maybe additional levels, or have a subscription-based service. For instance, this would allow you to have an e-reader with a bookstore built right in to the application. So either you pay a certain price for each book, or you pay a subscription and you can get all the books you want inside that application. Pretty interesting stuff. Another thing is peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, and this is going to be great for games. Basically, it'll work over Bluetooth and, you know, two iPhones get together. You could uh, play some first-person shooter or any game that, that supports this peer connectivity. Kind of interesting. Another thing is the Maps application is now an API, which allows developers to embed this into their applications. So no more are you going to have to worry about an application linking you to the Maps application. Now it'll be embedded. And another thing, uh, with Maps, Apple is actually enabling core location uh, for developers, which will allow for turn-by-turn -turn directions. This was a big thing. We expected this when, with the GPS in the iPhone 3G. Uh, but we never really got turn-by-turn -turn directions if you didn't uh, jailbreak your, your iPhone. And we heard a lot about, you know, turn-by-turn -turn apps coming, but we never actually saw that. Now it'll be supported by Apple. Stereo Bluetooth A2DP support is now included in the iPhone 3G. Uh, will be included in the, with the iPhone 3G with uh, iPhone OS 3.0. I say iPhone 3G because it's not going to be supported by the iPhone, but we'll get to that soon. Now, Push. A quote from what they said, you know we're late on this one. That's because push was a big thing that was supposed to be included in iPhone 2.0, but never was. Uh, they were having some issues with developers coming to them saying, can we use push for this, can we use push for this, can we use push for this, and Apple's infrastructure wasn't ready in place for all these different uses of it. But now Apple says that they're ready for it. With that, they went on to say specifically that there will be no background application, no background processes support. Now, Apple tested this on a popular AIM client and run it, let it run in the background, and according to their results, standby battery life dropped by 80% or more. So as Apple says, push preserves battery life, maintains performance, and is optimized for mobile networks. Pretty interesting. Now, something I never even thought of in my wish list, but it is kind of interesting, live streaming support. Apple is announcing an API for streaming video and audio, and they're adding that API for in-game voice, which is kind of interesting. And with that, they'll be using a new media player that automatically just quality for the bandwidth that you have. So if you're on Wi-Fi, you'll get better quality than if you're on 3G, just so there's no stutter. Now, uh, the way I interpret this is, and the way Apple showed it is, you can maybe have like an ESPN or an NFL application or a soccer application, and you'd be able to watch those live stream games onto your device. But hopefully they also allow you to stream video from your iPhone out to the web. That would be really sweet. Another huge thing, cut, copy, and paste. This is imperative, and it was just silly that they didn't come out and tell you, as a spoiler, copy and paste is coming, because cut, copy, and paste is an extreme necessity that is just, uh, why wouldn't they include that in iPhone OS 1? Not sure. But how does this work? You double, tech, you double tap on text, and it automatically selects it. Then it puts grab points at the end of your selection that allows you to adjust what you're, what you're copying. And then you have a cut, copy, and paste bubble that goes above it. This works across applications, so you can cut something in mail, paste it into your browser, take something from a, another app, put it into your, uh, send it in a text message. That's pretty sweet. It can also copy HTML and pictures as well, which is really cool. And to undo something, they've implemented a shake API, so you just shake your iPhone, and it'll undo your thing, which is really nice. Landscape keyboard was something I was really looking for. Apple says key apps will be getting a landscape keyboard. I'm not really sure what key apps means. I think they need to have landscape keyboards overall, so anytime you rotate into landscape mode, you'll get a, you'll get yourself a landscape keyboard, and I think that should be an option even if the application doesn't support it. Uh, just 
just to have a general thing that all apps can support it through Apple. I think that's something that they need. But they say key apps, I'm not exactly sure what that is about, but whatever. Going along with messaging, uh, there's now forward and delete messages, at, uh, forward and delete multiple messages, which is really a good thing that they needed. Uh, a lot of people wanted to be able to forward SMS messages, but now you can do MMS messages. Now, one thing, again, this is one of those features that won't be supported on the original iPhone. We'll get back to that in a second. But now you'll be able to send your pictures that you take on your device, do all these things. MMS was just something that was necessary. I was reading some people saying it's an AT&T restriction. It's not an AT&T restriction, okay? It's, you're not actually, when you when you do MMS, I believe, if I'm, sh if I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure, you pay for data and you pay for MMS, SMS, but there's no additional MMS charge. It's just that your data, it's using data. So you'll be charged the data for it. That's, I'm, that's, I'm pretty sure the pricing structure for AT&T. So you were already paying unlimited data, so it was just, duh, you need MMS support. Voice memos is also an interesting thing, so you can make voice memos, add them to your contacts, which is interesting. So, it, it, voice memos. <laughs> Another really cool thing that I thought about, and I actually did a jailbroke application review on something similar to this, but universal search for your device. So now they'll, they're allowing you to what they call Spotlight for iPhone, which is universal search working across applications. So you can use it in any application you want. And what how I put a spin on it also, it's also across data types, which means if you search, if you start searching for something, it's going to pull contact information, it's going to pull music information. It's a universal search, so it'll work for anything. Now that's just a brief rundown of all the updates that Apple did. Uh, there's a lot more if you check out uh, maybe Engadget. They'll have a more detailed list of the little, the smaller things, but those are just the big things that pop out with iPhone OS 3.0, the new preview that Apple released on March 17th. Now when will this be available? Summer 2009 is what Apple's telling us, and it'll be available. The App Store will now be available in 77 countries also. They're updating that. Now, it'll be free for iPhone users and iPhone 3G users, but there have been some hardware changes between the iPhone and the iPhone 3G. So things such as stereo Bluetooth and MMS, like I mentioned earlier, won't work on the original iPhone, not because of the software, but because of hardware restrictions. So you're not gonna, or lack thereof of hardware. So, we'll see. Also, it'll be $9.95 for iPod Touch users. I'm not sure if you'll have to have 2.0 to upgrade to 3.0, maybe, uh, it'll be nice if you just had an original iPod Touch, you could just pay one fee and bring it up to 3.0. I'm not sure about that. But this leads us to believe that this is just half of it, the new software. When this is released in summer 2009, I can almost guarantee you that there will be new hardware to accompany this. So maybe we'll still get that new camera, maybe we'll still get an actual keyboard. Probably not once they, they specifically talked about landscape keyboards, so we're probably not going to see a new keyboard. But maybe we'll see a higher resolution screen, just some other things, a better camera, front-facing camera, etc. That'd be with the new hardware. But for now, that's just the iPhone OS 3.0 preview. Thanks for watching. See you later.